Sonnet number 18 by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. A sonnet from William Shakespeare. I wanted to talk a little bit about his sonnets today. William Shakespeare wrote 154 love sonnets, and the sonnets are split between two entities. The one person we call the young man, the other person is the dark woman. He had an obsession with these two people. We know that Shakespeare was married to a woman named Anne Hathaway, with whom he had three children, but he left her and he went to the city where he lived in London and where he wrote his plays and worked with his theater, the Globe Theater. Um, at some point in his life, he became really infatuated with these two people that he wrote his sonnets for. The ones that he wrote for the dark woman are darker in tone and the ones that he wrote for the young man are more uplifting and you see in the, the ones he wrote for the young man this theme about kind of preserving things in his poetry which is kind of interesting because when you read Shakespeare's plays he was not trying to preserve them he was just writing them one play at a time to be performed on the stage like I mentioned last week in the video but with the sonnets we do kind of get this feeling that Shakespeare is trying to immortalize the subject of, of his poems in the written word. And you can sense that in that poem when he says, as long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. That feeling of I will immortalize you in this poem. And as long as this poem exists, we're going to conquer mortality in that sense. I wanted to talk to you guys also about iambic pentameter. When you read Shakespeare's plays. When you read his sonnets, he, he never strays from iambic pentameter in his sonnets. He occasionally does in his plays. He occasionally breaks the flow. But iambic pentameter is, if you look here, this is the opening to the sonnet we just looked at, and it says, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer lease has all too short a date. An I am is a rhythmic uh, unit in poetry that's two beats, one stressed and one unstressed. So it sounds almost like a heartbeat. It goes boom, boom. So five I ams is ten, ten heartbeats, or ten beats. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. So he, he consistently keeps iambic pentameter through all of his sonnets. In his plays, he's going to stay in iambic pentameter most of the time, although occasionally he shifts away from that. But I want you guys to, t to get that in your heads for today's lesson, what iambic pentameter is, that beat, ten syllables with the ba-ba, 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 ba-ba. So one of Shakespeare's famous uh, soliloquies in Richard II goes, Let's talk of graves of worms and epitaphs, make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Now when you speak it, when you're acting, you're not counting out the beats like that, but you could take those words and do the beats like that. So you could say, let's talk of graves of worms and epitaphs. Make dust our paper and with rainy eyes. So you see how each one of those lines has ten syllables. 
That's just one more thing that's amazing about this man that had a 21,000 word vocabulary. He was able to compose in iambic pentameter, which is truly an astonishing thing. Try it yourself if you think it's easy. It is not. I could not, I could not do it the way he does it if I had to. So that's iambic pentameter. Remember some of the stuff we talked about last week, guys. Shakespeare wrote four types of plays, tragedies, histories, romances, and comedies. Um, remember that he had the vocabulary of 21,000 words, that his p plays were performed in the Globe Theater, that he, re he wrote under the reign of two monarchs, Queen Elizabeth and King Richard I. His group of actors were, were uh, the king's men. I already talked about him having three children and a wife. So, anyway, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is your assignment this week. You're going to have to look at the speech that I actually quoted to you last week, which is from The Merchant of Venice, and it's Shylock's speech when he talks about being a human being. Even though he's Jewish, he has all these qualities, and I want you to think about how Shakespeare breaks those things down. Hath not a Jew eyes, hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions. Because when you're reading Shakespeare, that is the central idea. What does it mean to be a human being? Shakespeare is obsessed with that question. And it's an important one. We have to think about that as people. It's what unites us. We need to recognize that now more than ever. So I'll end on a uh, optimistic, uplifting note. I hope everybody's doing well. I miss you guys so much. It's been really tough not seeing you guys. Um, stay strong. Stay optimistic. If you got behind on your work last week, catch up this week. We are trying to work with you guys. We are not trying to burden you with work. It's a hard situation for us. It's a hard situation for you, and we want to work with you guys. All we care about is you learning and getting your grades. So email me anytime if you have anything on your mind, guys. I am here for you. I care about you. Hope High cares about you. We're a special place, and you're special people. I love you guys. Be well. I'll catch you later.